Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer action. We're here with Vlad the Dad, Von Karstein, who is probably my favorite vampire counselor. And I know, I know, more undead so soon. But uh, yeah, I wanted to check out. Vlad, I believe, did get a cost increase and got some of the stagger reductions that some of the other infantry type lords got. So I've been using him quite a bit lately. Like I said, he is probably my favorite vampire lord, both in terms of lore and uh, in terms of battlefield use. He, of course, is very tanky, has regeneration and the uh, Von Karstein ring to give him extra damage resistance. Makes, makes him very tough to snipe, which against the Empire can be pretty important, of course. We also have uh, Raise Dead, Dance Macabre, and Invocation of Neheck, of course. The Blood Dreaker plus Hunger, meaning he'll regener regenerate a lot of HP in combat. And that Aura of Dark Grandeur is pretty decent. That minus forward leadership, it's nice to have. Certainly. As for the rest of the army, we've got a black coach here to provide terror. Front line of zombies, second line of spears with a third line of graveguard. Each graveguard has a supporting white king captain. And yeah, we've got uh, two corpse carts. Again, unholy lodestone on one, and the other one is a bare 250-point corpse cart. Basically just here for the vigor mortis, and also to uh, provide a distraction target for my opponent to shoot at. You can see the empire cannon. Actually focusing that corpse cart, which just in terms of raw value is a terrible trade. The corpse cart re can regenerate HP and it only costs 250 points. So just as a PSA, guys, if you do see a build like this using one of these basic corpse carts that doesn't have any of the modifiers, don't bother shooting at it. It's not really worth your time. Um, I mean, granted, getting rid of the Vigor Mortis is nice, but like this, uh, Unholy Lodestone would definitely be a much better target. The regeneration from this thing can actually help quite a bit. I did fail to mention I do have some Blood Knights as well. Yeah, a couple Blood Knights to give us some heavy anti-cav. And the uh, Dire Pack have kind of made their way up through the woods here. I'm trying to sneak them into my opponent's backline, potentially. As for the Empire, we've got Boris with a Light Wizard leading the way, Flagellants, and Great Swords in the front line with some uh, Hand Gunners. So a pretty standard Empire build. This Great Cannon is having a tough time getting line of sight uh, because of the, the hills and so on here. So an unfortunate situation there, but... We're just getting uh, getting things moving across the board. You can see hand gunners uh, starting to fire a little bit in here. They don't have that many great targets to shoot at. You can see I'm kind of hiding the black coach behind this big rock here so that it doesn't get shot by the cannon or the hand gunners. We're going to pull it up to this side and see if we can't disrupt my opponent's back line a little bit. But here comes the zombie boys. We've got the uh, white kings getting in here as well, of course. And Vlad leading the way. Oh, yeah. Looks like he's probably going to get netted, but honestly, this is a pretty big mistake. Vlad really doesn't care too much if, if he tries to get goon, so he's just going to pop the uh, Karstein ring just in case Boris decides to jump down here or if the uh, guns go after him very aggressively. A warrior priest in the front line as well for some support buffs, but uh, you can see the dire pack moving up and around. We've got the uh, black coach just kind of moving around. We are getting shot up a little bit by the handgunners, but that's fine for now. You can see a giant flanking force coming in over on this side, and here the Dire Pack are able to get onto the Great Cannon crew. So we've shut them down. The Demogriff Knights are going to respond. The uh, Royal Altar Fur Fights here also on the field. But you can see my Blood Knights coming in the distance there. Oh man, this is a beautiful shot right there with that background. Boris is going to swing into the front line, but you can see uh, the Warrior Priest came in to fight where Vlad is, and this is an absolute mistake. Vlad is a very strong duelist in terms of his melee stats, 70 attack, 50 defense, 480 weapon strength, which uh, although he doesn't have that much AP, it's pretty decent total weapon strength, uh, 170 AP. And you can see here the handgunners are firing in. We have managed to shatter the cannon crew, and the Blood Knights came in and got a really good rear charge on those Royal Altar Crypt fights. Granted, they are holding out for the time being, but uh, here Boris is getting some good anti-infantry damage done. You can see the White Kings have so far taken very little damage, but uh, Vlad blows himself up a little bit there for an overcast invocation of heck on this main pocket of Blood Knights. And a very nice net of Amatok comes down to keep those Blood Knights in place. Granted, the Royal Altar Crypt fights have already pretty much been dealt with, the balance of power is already starting to tip, so not looking amazing for the Empire so far. But uh, this is also a very bad situation. This uh, Light Wizard needs to get the heck out of here and not stay engaged with Vlad in melee, just because obviously he will lose that quite badly. Uh, Boris is still going to take a while to take down, but some uh, zombies just interrupt those spearmen there, so they can't help support against the Blood Knights. The uh, Dire Pack can just kind of sit here and keep Boris on the ground, and then we're going to try and cycle charge a little bit with the Blood Knights, maybe bring this Corpse Cart up and around. 
The infantry grind is definitely getting pretty real, and obviously these great swords and flagellants are racking up a ton of kills, but mostly just against zombies. You can see 155 kills, and they're not even halfway to a chevron, so uh, that is a lot of the idea with this type of build, is you just bring a super wide build with Vlad, just bog everything down. Uh, the Black Coach, I haven't been microing super well, but we've been able to somewhat disrupt the handgunners, at least keep them from shooting at the Blood Knights somewhat. This unit, though, has gotten into a really nice position to fire. Going to be doing some excellent DPS, supporting the Royal Alt of Grafites as they've come back from route, and all of a sudden this fight isn't going amazing. These Blood Knights are crumbling, zombies are uh, also looking like they're going to crumble along with the Dire Pack. Granted, this second unit of Blood Knights is still pretty healthy. The White King and Infantry are slowly grinding through the Empire line. I mean, even over here, like, they'll win out, but they're going to have a tough time getting through these Grave Guard and that Corpse Cart. We'll see. Balance of Power is still pretty close, but a lot of that does come from summons and so on, right? So we'll see. A very nice net here on the Black Coach. It does look like these Handgunners might be able to take it out. We'll see if they get maybe one or two more volleys. They could force it into crumbling. But uh, over here, yeah, the Blood Knights, again, starting to lose this combat a little bit as the Altorker fights only have six models, but they're kind of all formed up into a pocket here. And Boris is also providing some nice, uh, nice debuffs with his item. So, yeah, the White King, though, again, the two White Kings really are kind of the, the complement to Vlad here. They're just tanky infantry characters. They can help... Uh, Undead Infantry, which normally has much worse stats than Empire State Troops, just in terms of their attack and defense. Like, you can see these Skeleton Spearmen. Granted, they did start with some Chevrons, but uh, they really have pretty poor stats to begin with. The White King just gives you, like, a damage element of that. He's anti-infantry bonus, good weapon strength, decent stats, and he's reasonably tanky as well. You can see Boris here trying to get some supporting fire from the, those guns. They do tear down a couple of those Blood Knights. That Blood Knight unit's probably actually going to pop here. So they go down to a minus four and even lower. So, yeah, both Blood Knight units, it looks like, down at this point. But I just don't think my opponent has enough stopping power to get through Vlad and these two White Kings at the end of the day. They could probably just grind out this uh, this fight. And are we entering the patch of the Foot Lords? I, I, this is a larger discussion that I want to have probably in a separate video. But I honestly think that this might be the patch where Foot Lords really come into their own. And, I mean, we've never really had a patch where Foot Lords were the meta. But there are a number of Foot Lords. You know, Vlad, Queek, uh, Skarsnik, and Grimgore both. Um, I think that there's a handful of others that I need to get, get the hang of. I'm curious to try, like, maybe Tyrion on foot or maybe a couple of others, but... There's just some of the infantry lords that because their their stats are very good and they just, you know, they're hard to kill. You can take a very wide army usually with them because they're usually reasonably cheap. Um, and the, the melee heroes as well. I haven't shown off a ton of Empire Captain replays. They've been featured a couple times. But like the Empire Captain, the White King, these kind of basic melee heroes getting a bit cheaper in the last patch was actually quite nice because if you strip them down... No abilities, no mounts. They are quite strong in that they can uh, they can kind of duel here. And you can see Boris, although he's getting some good hits in, he cha he takes chunks of damage every now and then from uh, Vlad and the White King. I mean, if he was cycle charging pretty aggressively, he could maybe grind it out. But especially with the corpse carts here buffing their stats, you can see over here this unit of great swords eventually just got ground down by Graveguard and that uh, that White King there. So we're gonna grab the other. Uh, corpse cart head over here but it looks like things are pretty much shattering at this point so we'll fast forward through the end empire player managed to make it reasonably close at the end of the day there uh, definitely miss micro my blood knights and the uh the black coach unfortunately and didn't end up getting that many kills at the end of the day but we still kept those uh kept those handgunners from doing too much like the blood knights were able to get in tons of chevrons on them they got lots of work done against high value targets being able to catch the Royal Altar for fights on a rear charge because they kind of countered in on the Dire Pack was a very good situation for me. I really don't like bringing this many ranged units as the Empire against the Vampire Counts, especially these static ranged units like Infantry Skirmishers or Great Cannons. I think you're better off if you do feel like you want to take Skirmishers, you're definitely better off with Missile Cav or something mobile like a Steam Tank can be okay, but Steam Tanks are pretty risky in this matchup. You can kind of do some funny stuff and grind things out, like uh, 
you know, if you manage to get the Blood Knights blobbed up on the Steam Tank, and then maybe get a good rear charge on them. Just shooting the Blood Knights is pretty decent as well with the Steam Tank, but it, it's a bit risky here, um, and it's definitely pretty expensive. But just in general, I would recommend against bringing these, you know, like handgunners, great cannons, stuff like that. Even like Free Company Militia. Free Company Militia are okay because they have decent stats, but they still don't have the best leadership. They get terrified relatively easily, and like if I had microed my black coach reasonably well the uh, handgunners definitely would have been a lot less effective but yeah you can see the kills on the empire infantry definitely got a lot of numbers but that's kind of the idea here is just to flood the board with bodies the uh, empire infantry will get tired and t more tired as the battle goes on the white kings can just grind them out in the late game with vlad so worked reasonably well that time let me know what you guys think though are we entering the patch of the foot lords is that age actually upon us let me know down in the comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this one. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. So every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.